today okay. we're talking about the refusal reason and it's called 214B, 214B, obviously. And that is one of the main reasons why many international students get rejected. So before, you know, we dive into a, a little bit of a background, obviously for our audience. So typically when you apply for any non-immigrant visas, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because obviously you would know better, a lot better. Typically when you apply for any non-immigrant visas, which student visa is one of the non-immigrant visas, and you go to your interview, it's at the sole discretion of the visa officer to actually approve you or deny you, right? And one of the most common reasons why people get denied, it's called 214B. And usually people share that, you know, sheet that says you've been rejected for 214B, blah, 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 for these reasons. And so let's talk about that today. If you want to explain a little bit what that is and what it means would be wonderful. Sure, absolutely. Well, thank you. That was a very good uh, uh, background intro. 214B is a section of the Immigration and Nationality Act of the United States. And it's very important to understand that what 214B essentially is saying is that the applicant, this person giving the interview, has failed to overcome the presumption of immigrant intent. What does that mean in like standard language? It means that the consular officer got starts out with the assumption that you're going to go to the United States, whatever you're applying for on your visa, and stay there or work there without you know having proper authorization. It's not because the consular officer is super suspicious. Mm -hmm. That is the law. They yeah. start out with that presumption. The applicant's job during the interview is to convince the consular officer that that is actually not true. They do not intend to remain in the United States or work in the United States without authorization, but that they intend to go for the reason that their visa is for, which is student visa, they're intending to go to study. And so that's what 214B is about. They, The consular officer, when they refuse someone 214B, in general, it means they don't believe you about that you're gonna go and do what you say you're gonna do with your application and your, your documents and so on. And so it might not be that they think, oh, it's a 100% sure thing that you're gonna go work or that you're gonna remain in the United States, but they've got enough doubt in their mind that you did not overcome that presumption. So you you basically, you step into the batter's box. All right, I, I realize I don't play baseball a lot <laughs> in some of your markets, but you, you, you step, let's say, you step into, you know, the, the game already, uh, you know, in, in a little bit of a deficit that you've got to overcome. And how do you do that? We'll get to that. But that's what 214B is. They don't believe that you've overcome that presumption that you're going to stay in the U.S. or violate your visa status when you're in the U.S. That's great. So usually, and usually that is basically based on the interview itself and the presumption, obviously, of the officer. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as far as the documents go, they're important because the documents are what you can demonstrate that you have things in your home country that you're not going to just simply abandon, okay? You're not going to abandon, for example, spouse. You're not going to necessarily abandon your children. If you have a group, and this applies to tourist visas, other temporary visas, not just student visas. You have ties to your home country that, you know, you don't want to get just uh, cancel out by staying in the United States. With a student visa, it's a little bit harder, Ashkan, because you're talking in many cases, a student's going to go to the United States, stay there for years. Yeah. And uh, yeah. then they're saying, after four years, five years, I'm going to come back. So with 214B for student visa, it's a little bit different than 214B for, say, a tourist visa. Sure. Okay. Sure. Where you're going to go for two weeks, maybe. Someone's going to go there 18, 19, maybe older if they're going to graduate school. And they've got to convince the consular officer that when they are no longer invalid, you know, when their student visa time is up, if they don't have any other lawful way to stay, they will leave. So with student more than tourist or many other categories, it's really about being believable. You know, are you a serious student? That has presented, you know, a really credible case for the fact that you're going to the United States to study. And that's why you're going to the United States. And if they believe you, you have a pretty good chance of getting the visa. 